Season 2 of the Belleville Sens podcast continues from the Jack Miller Press Box and Media Center at CAA Arena. It's episode 27 this week. We uh, get closer to the end of our second season, but still lots to get to in the next few weeks. Uh, This week, we will hear three more of our exit interviews uh, as the Belleville Sens cleared out their lockers uh, almost a month ago now. Uh, We'll hear from Wyatt Bongiovanni, Matt Highmore, and Rourke Charche all coming up on this week's show. Plus, we will uh, get you caught up on the Calder Cup playoffs. The Calder Cup final is almost set, and depending on what happens out in Chocolate Town tonight between the Hershey Bears and the Cleveland Monsters, we could have a rematch of last season's Calder Cup final because the Coachella Valley Firebirds are already through uh, for the second straight year. And again, we'll touch on all of that coming up later on in the show. David Foote, Brock Ormond uh, here with you. Thanks for being with us. The uh, usual reminder to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening. Uh, Toss us a rating and a review. Uh, We would really appreciate that uh, as uh, we continue on uh, here. Episode 27. How was the week, Brock? Uh, uh, Not a whole lot uh, hockey-wise going on uh, unless you're watching the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, just uh, checking in on that and uh, also uh, the uh, Calder Cup and what a... uh nutty uh, third round it's been between Hershey and Cleveland three nothing the Bears were up and all of a sudden uh, Cleveland comes roaring back it looked like Hershey was uh, sailing their way smoothly to the uh, Calder Cup final for the second straight year but then the Monsters as we've seen start uh, uh, pescaring around and and start uh, doing a little comeback and uh, you know Hershey scores in the last minute in game six Uh, looks like a pretty uh, close finisher it looks like Hershey's going to move on then all of a sudden Cleveland ties it uh, later on in the final minute, and then they go to win it in overtime. So uh, certainly been a series uh, for the ages between those, those two teams, and uh, they will fight it out for the right to beat Coachella Valley in the final. Game seven uh, in the Eastern Conference tonight. Uh, again, uh, as of recording of this program, it is uh, Wednesday the 12th of June. So uh, game number seven of the East final is tonight and uh, Coachella Valley getting through with a 4-1 series win over the Milwaukee Admirals. More on that coming up later in the show. Uh, Let's uh, shift the focus back to the Belleville Senators and continuing with our off-season exit interviews. And again this week, uh, Matt Highmore, Rourke Chartier, and Wyatt Bongiovanni are our topics of discussion. And uh, let's maybe start with uh, Rourke Chartier because um, this is a guy who wasn't in Belleville a lot this season because he made the Ottawa Senators out of camp. Uh, He got into a bunch of games with the NHL club, 37 of them, uh, the most he's played in the National Hockey League in one season. Um, Rourke Sharche is a guy who's battled injuries throughout his campaign. He has been a uh, go-to guy for the Belleville Sens uh, over the last three seasons now, including this one. And, um, you know, wasn't, I assume, uh, pleased to come back to the American Hockey League because guys rarely are, but uh, back he came, 13 points in 19 games, and maybe not as productive as he would have liked Brock, but uh, did exactly what he was supposed to do uh, when he came back after those uh, almost 40 games in the show this year. Yeah, he's a veteran guy with uh, with a lot of presence, and he did have 20 goals uh, last year in 2022-23, and you're right, uh, when he came back to Belleville, it was uh, just shy of, of 20 games, and uh, yeah, at, t- at times he was just uh, maybe pressing a little bit, but uh, when he was on, uh, he was uh, an offensive guy to watch for. He was always dangerous around the net, and he did to have that physical presence that could create room for his teammates out there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was a little bit of a whirlwind season for him, but uh, in the end, uh, it seemed like it, it worked out okay for him, but now he's going to see if he can try and uh, push back to, to Ottawa. But when he came back for those 19 games, he offered a little more of a uh, extra weapon for David Bell, where, again, you could put him anywhere in the lineup. He's pretty versatile that way, and usually he comes out successful. And, uh, again, it really has had to go through a lot in terms of uh, finding some stability uh, in his career due to injuries, and uh, we'll chat about that with him uh, here on uh, this 27th episode of Season 2 of the Belleville Sens podcast. Here is forward Rourke Charche as we continue on with our 2023-24 exit interview series. It was a pretty good season for you, I'd say. You spent more than half of it uh, in the NHL with Ottawa, and then you joined this team just in time for the playoff run. Um, how did you feel about uh, about your campaign overall? Yeah, it was a bit of a crazy year for me. Um, some ups and downs, but no, it was uh, 
overall looking back, I think big picture it was is a successful one, but uh yeah, I know it was a bit of a bit of a different year for sure. Yeah. Uh longest stretch um in the NHL that you've played so far in in your career, how was um that experience and what kind of uh I guess led to that success that uh, uh and what's it like I guess to play almost every day in the NHL? Yeah, no, I think uh I was in a kind of a weird position where I was really a part of two teams and you know up until January I was I was up there every day and in the lineup and unfortunately had a little bit of injury trouble up there and uh no it was it was good to be a part of and for me you know I, I missed some time in my career so I thought it was it, it felt really good to you know prove prove I could be an everyday NHLer and, and make a team out of training camp and uh, you know just be be on, be on the team and you know that's everyone's goal and uh, obviously I've had a lot of ups and downs so it was uh it meant a lot to me and then obviously I, I came back here for a little bit and especially you know at the end I think it was important to you know help get some of these younger guys and give some guys experience in the playoffs and being in a tight race right down to the end well and uh for, you know for yourself as well like you've been with this team with the organization since 21 22 you were part of this uh team's first playoff appearance we'll call it not a true run I suppose um, but how nice was it to kind of be able to be back here and and be a part of that first franchise uh, series win in the playoffs and and to help kind of set the foundation for this club moving forward yeah I think obviously playoffs and winning you know winning at the end of the day is what what you're trying to do and what you're trying to establish a winning culture or and sometimes you know you got to take baby steps and I think to knock it in would have been a big uh, big uh, letdown and obviously uh, the team changes a lot over the year in the American League. You never know what you had. Like I said, I, I wasn't down here till January for at all. So, um, no, it was a really good group in there. And, you know, I was happy to be a part of that push to get guys in. And, like I said, gives guys a chance to play on a play on a bigger platform. And whether they're back here or somewhere else next year, it, uh, like I said, I think, I think people uh, in the hockey world uh, take a lot of uh, – I guess put a lot of stock in the you know how guys play down stretches and in playoff games so sure. i think that was important for everyone um was there any um part of your game or that you maybe felt you you were able to improve this year make some strides yeah i think uh myself getting older like obviously uh it's a bit of a different role for me when i was up top to down here and yeah. uh so i think i try to play the same way every night whether whatever league i was in and uh I mean, I don't know if there's one area in my game, but for me, uh, probably the biggest difference was, like I said, being being up there for for the long stretch and uh, being an everydayer, which is, you know, a different different animal in itself compared to you know getting called up for a game or two. So, I think that was probably the biggest biggest cha- changes in my game were things that were different for me. But no, I think, uh, like I said, it was it was a different year for me, but overall, I think a successful one. Couple more minutes here with uh, forward Rourke Charche. Um, was there a highlight to the season uh, for you, whether it be here or uh, or in Ottawa? Because again, you, you spent a lot of time in in the NHL this year. Yeah, I think obviously it was great being in Toronto here. That'd be probably my highlight down here. Yeah. Um, like I said, we hadn't found a way. I thought a couple of years ago we we had a really good team and just lost a couple overtime games to Roch and. Obviously, we had a lot of overtime games this year, so it could have gone anyway. It's so. kind of crazy how they're almost similar like that, right? Like it's just, the overtime in the playoffs is such such a different animal. Yeah, and uh, I mean, having now these three games and five games, I'm not a huge fan of them. I feel like you know the real winner comes out in a seven gamer when yeah. when it does, you know, you it, it factors in more. But in kind of the lightning round series, there anything can happen, so it's a little scary, but. Yeah, I would be lying if I didn't think there was a couple moments there when we went to overtime again that maybe things weren't meant to be here. But, no, that was probably my highlight down here. And for me, personal highlight for sure would probably have been uh, when I scored up top for yeah. the first time this year. Uh, I think it had been five or six years between goals in the NHL. So, it, uh, you know, that probably felt ten times better than even my first first one in the league up there. So that'd be my personal highlight from, from being up there and obviously just getting to know guys and I think getting to know guys on on both teams. You know, it's it's a weird thing where I I felt like I was a part of part of both of them and yeah. and you know, got gotta meet a lot of good guys and uh you know, it was it was a fun year that that way. Uh it's your third season spending time in Belleville. Um how have you felt about the the Bay of Quinney region uh, the city of Belleville and just 
being basically a resident of of this uh, this area. Yeah, no, I think uh, it, it's come come a ways for me. Obviously, the first year here, we were coming out of COVID and stuff, right. so yeah, so everything was a little slow and and this and that. But I think uh, you know I, I like it here, and um, you know I've I've got kind of my routine here, and there we we got stuff to do. So I think it's it's a great great city, and guys, like I said, it's maybe it's the group of guys that makes it a little bit better even, but. No, I'm pretty comfortable out in this this area this area of the woods, and it's uh, it's been good to me. Yeah. Uh, what's the rest of the summer look like uh, for you from here? Uh, nothing too crazy planned right now. I got a few weddings getting to that age where I got to go uh, go go to a couple of those. Yeah. Anywhere all... fun? I've been asking guys who have weddings anywhere fun or. Just I think the... can do one Boston, Toronto. Boston's There's one in good. Minnesota as well. Okay. So kind of all over the map. So I think they'll be fun. I got got a couple in northern Saskatchewan, so those will those will be just as fun too. They'll be fun, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be busy with those, but I don't know. I'll I'll get back home, do some golfing, and spend time at the lake, and nothing too crazy for yeah. the next bit. But uh, but it'll be good to just uh, wind down. Yeah, the, the last nine months have been crazy enough. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So no, it'll be good to sit back for a bit and just just relax. Yeah, awesome. Well, it was great to see you have that success in Ottawa this year. Great to have you back for the playoff run, and I uh, appreciate the time again, man. Have a great summer. Yeah, thanks. You too, footy. Thanks, buddy. Big deal. So there's uh, Rourke Chartier on the uh, Belleville Sands podcast, Season 2, Episode 27. A uh, nice seven minutes with uh, Chartier, who, again, a veteran for the Belleville Sands, been with this team since 2021-22, uh, had a career year in terms of his games played in the NHL this year. And um, continuing to, again, try to, uh, even at, uh, you know, almost 30, trying to kind of reset himself and, and continue to build um, as he's done the last couple seasons here in Belleville. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, he's, he said it right there in the interview, too. It was a bit of a, uh, it was a, bit of a weird year going from Ottawa basically consistently through January and then to come back to Belleville. But uh, his uh, importance to this team was not to be understated because uh, he did offer that a veteran calm in the room, much like a Garrett Pilon who was here all year, but uh, or Dylan Hetherington, and uh, his his game definitely translated well to the ice here at uh, CAA Arena. And uh, yeah, whether he comes back here, whether he goes to Ottawa, whether he goes somewhere else, uh, he's going to be a valuable play, uh, piece for somebody down the line. Yep, didn't score as much as he probably would have liked, but did have seven in uh, 19 games for Belleville this season, including this one at Rochester. As uh, we take a break here on uh, Season 2, Episode 27 of the Belleville Sins Podcast. On Smakel, digs it free. Sharche finds it. He's got a little room, and Smakel joining in as well. Sharche to the right circle with a shot. He scores! A Sharche shorty starts the scoring in Rochester. And works right there. Stay ahead of the game. Plan now for the next season of Belleville Senators Hockey. 2024-25 renewals and new seat packages are on sale now. Visit BellevilleSens.com to receive information on pricing and learn about the exclusive benefits season seat members receive because you want to be in on all Sens hockey action. Plan to get in the game. More on season seat memberships at BellevilleSens.com. Go Sens Go! Season 2, episode 27 of the Belleville Sens podcast continues with myself, David Foote, and uh, Brock Ormond. Thanks for tuning in this week. Again, uh, coming up later on in the show, we'll hear from Wyatt Bongiovanni. Acquired at the trade deadline by the Senators and uh, brought in here to Belleville to help with the playoff push. And then we'll also check in on the uh, Calder Cup playoffs with the uh, Eastern Conference Final between... Cleveland and Hershey headed to game seven tonight in uh, Chocolate Town. The winner gets the Coachella Valley Firebirds uh, in the championship series. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, our uh, next guest, uh, Matt Highmore, who uh, joined the Senators uh, over the offseason, one of a, a handful of veteran players that Ryan Bonus and uh, his staff brought in to try to uh, – solidify the roster a little bit, help guide the young prospects through another grueling 72-game American Hockey League season. And 
Um, Matt Highmore, a guy who brings some NHL experience with him, coming off uh, a really good season in 22-23 with the Springfield Thunderbirds. And, um, again, another really good season for the Belleville Sens here as well, 31 points in 43 games. And didn't factor in to the scoring at all in the playoffs, and you'll hear some pretty honest self-evaluation from Matt Highmore coming up in in a few minutes, but despite that lack of playoff production, Brock, this was a, a major piece to the puzzle uh, throughout the season for the Belleville Sens this year. Yeah, 31 points in 43 games, uh, a drop from the previous year, but he also played in 25 more games with the Springfield Thunderbirds. So, uh, yeah, injuries uh, hurt him a bit this year. He uh, bounced a couple of times back and forth between Belleville and Ottawa, and then he got hurt up in, in Ottawa and was uh, lost to both teams for a good solid month or maybe even month and a half. Uh, so it was kind of a, a, a topsy tour of a year. But when Highmore was in, again, another dangerous playmaker, a hard guy to knock off the puck. And, again, one, much like a Rourke Charche brings that veteran presence to the team because he's been through the AHL riggers before. Uh, he's, you know, played. He's won, a, uh, won uh, pretty much at every level. And uh, the Halifax native at uh, 28 years old, certainly uh, a key piece to the Sens team, whether uh, – you know, he was playing first line, second, fourth line, what have you. It's uh, it's tough to uh, to really un uh, state just how important he was to the team as well when he was in. And uh, one of those guys that uh, doesn't let the young guys uh, stray too far off their uh, their goal or off their uh, uh, push. And uh, it certainly really seemed like it, it paid major dividends uh, going down the stretch drive and into the playoffs. And another one of the East Coast uh, guys on this team, there's a lot of uh, Eastern Canadian flavor, and I think it really uh, made an impact on uh, on the room. We've talked about it and just kind of the demeanor of everybody and uh, the closeness of this group. And um, we've heard already from some of the younger players we talked to through this series, like you just said, Brock, that Matt Highmore is one of those guys that uh, from the get-go is always right there with the young players, helping to guide them along and, and um, not threatened at all necessarily by another player at the same position trying to rise up through the ranks as well. He, he knows what it takes to be uh, a successful pro player and, and what it takes to have success in this league. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in the AHL, you know, those veteran guys, as much as um, it's it can be a problem, a good problem to have if you're uh, running into having one or two extra guys, which uh, did end up happening this year with the Sens, uh, you still have that extra voice or two in the room that can uh, guide you along and on the uh, the bench when they're in and, and even just uh, going down after the in an intermission or something just to, to tap a guy and, and tell him, you know, he's doing a fine job or here's maybe what he needs to work on. So, yeah, so valuable in the American Hockey League and a development league, and uh, it's, it's it paid off, like we said. And uh, certainly if uh, Highmore makes his return to Belleville, uh, I could see him having a, a big boost next year for, uh, for points for sure. The 28-year-old from Halifax, Nova Scotia, scoring uh, nine times in his uh, debut season for Belleville, had a couple of points in seven NHL games as well, and uh, he joins us next as Matt Highmore on uh, Season 2, Episode 27 of the Belleville Sands Podcast. When first year as a senator, 43 games here, seven uh, with the big club, uh, an unfortunate injury for a little bit as well, but uh, how would you kind of put this season into words for yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was a lot of ups and downs, uh, for myself, obviously the, the injury wasn't ideal. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, had a lot of fun here. Uh, really enjoyed the group and, uh, boy, was a lot of fun there in the playoffs and that little mini, mini run that we had. Yeah. I was going to ask about the, the playoff uh, time. I mean, you've played in the Stanley cup playoffs as well, uh, in, uh, in the past, uh, but these games had a lot of meaning, I think for this team, for a lot of the guys who've been here and obviously for the fans as well. Um, what was that playoff experience kind of like here this year? Yeah, it was special. Um, you know, being able to get the franchise's first official playoff win and, um, you know, really taking uh, the fight to Cleveland, playing in a hostile environment there, but also like having our outstanding fans here, uh, you know, pack the CAA, which was awesome. Uh, this place really rocks when, um, you know, everybody's in here and yeah. um, big games are on the line. And so uh, it was a great experience. Uh, I, I hope that a lot of the young guys learned a lot from, from those games. Um, because I, I know I did, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I've certainly been around a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Were you happy with your season uh, individually, I suppose? Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, I think I think I learned a lot this year. Sure. Um, ultimately, I think I'd like to uh, 
uh, produce a little bit better. Um, you know, I know that's something that, um, you know, is part of my job and, um, sometimes they just didn't go in this, this year. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. And I, I'm certainly going to work on that in the, in the off season and, um, hopefully come back stronger. Um, a guy who's new to Belleville, um, how did you find, uh, settling into this community, uh, this, the Bay of Quinty area and then, um, just playing, uh, being able to play in, in Canada again after a year, uh, in the States? Yeah, it was, uh, it was great. Uh, I didn't know much about Belleville, um, when I got here, but started to, to get to know people and, um, you know, teammates and I, we would get out in the, in the community, whether it was school visits or just going out for dinner and, uh, certainly really enjoyed my time, um, yeah, it was awesome to be back in Canada, too. Uh, there's nothing like a Canadian market. And, um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we've been talking to guys uh, about the uh, the camaraderie of this group and how tight-knit uh, it, it really was. Um, obviously, I assume you felt that way. And, and as part of the leadership group, maybe what were some of the keys to creating that kind of environment in the dressing room here? Yeah, absolutely. Like, we were – it's one of the tightest teams I've ever been on. Yeah. Um, you know, I think from the start of the year, we really grew. Um, you know, there were some growing pains early, uh, as a lot of teams go through, but it only made us stronger. Um, we really came together, you know, getting closer to Christmas and um, understanding what it takes in this league to win. So, um, you know, winning makes everything better. Uh, it makes it a lot more fun to come to the rink, and uh, we cer- certainly did enough of that. And, um, you know, our team was just uh, – Super caring, and uh, everybody loved each other, and uh, certainly made a difference. Yeah, and uh, you got to uh, help some young players kind of adapt to the uh, AHL as well. This was a relatively young group at the end of the day, and and a handful of rookie players who stepped into the lineup and did not look like rookies at all. It was kind of crazy, actually. Yeah, uh, those guys need to be really proud of themselves. Uh, It's not an easy... um, league to come into yeah Uh, it really is a tough league uh it's different than junior uh it's a little bit different than being up top so um this league's a tough league to come into and they did a great job uh you can't say enough about those young guys they really powered us into the playoffs and uh you could you could see in the playoffs too they were only getting better and better with with each game uh how, how does that maybe make your job as a veteran player a little bit easier when um when these guys do seem so prepared and and ready to just kind of step in and and be impactful and you can just kind of go hey well we're, we're just here now this is it yeah i mean listen as a as a veteran player like you always want to be there for support um if guys need to bounce things off you uh just questions about day to day whatnot but um they were uh they were certainly very prepared to come into this league and uh, um you know they reaped the ben- benefits of it um, uh, what's the rest of the summer look like uh, for you headed back out east, I imagine? Yeah, back home. A um, little bit of rest and recovery for now. Um, you know, the playoff bumps and bruises. But, uh, yeah, I get home, just kind of reset, and uh, in a couple weeks here, get back to work. Yeah, much traveling at all? Or are you one of the guys who, when the season ends, it's home and I just want to be home? Yeah, I'm definitely a homebody, but uh, we're going to do a little bit of vacation. Um, and then once we get home from vacation, I don't leave the Maritimes. No. So. <laughs> and <laughs> and just, why would you? Why would you leave the Maritimes? Uh, listen, we've got uh, – I'm biased, but we've got a lot of good golf and, uh, you know, great weather once uh, July rolls around. All right. Uh, Matt Highmore, uh, thanks again. Uh, it was great to have you here this year. Uh, obviously, you made a big impact in the room and, and on the club. So uh, thanks for all your time, and uh, have a good summer, man. Yeah, thanks. I, I really appreciate it, and thank you guys for everything that you guys did for us. Perfect. All right, there's uh, Matt Highmore uh, on episode 27, season two of the Belleville Sins podcast. And, um, again, we've been talking a lot last few weeks, Brock, about kind of a wish list of of players that we'd like to see back again. And while basically we'd like to see all of them back, I think Matt Highmore is probably in that top three, top five of guys you'd like to see a return. Yeah, a real real solid guy and solid player. And, again, one of those uh, guys from the Maritimes, much like a Josh Curry uh, along those lines where he uh, he just gets what what it takes to be a professional hockey player and it uh, really seemed like it, uh, it he was he was home in Belleville like he, he I mean Halifax is his real regular home but um here in Belleville uh, he he fit really well and like he said uh, you know getting out in the community and seeing people and that and and uh, you know making that bond between the fans and the players uh, that's what's so great about uh about any any level below the NHL basically is mm-hmm. uh, is the fans feel closer to you as a player and uh, v- 
vice versa. You go back and forth. So uh, Matt Highmore, a great uh, all-around guy and a good vet uh, in the room, and uh, David Bell would, would love to have him back next year. Yeah, we certainly would. Uh, scored a bunch for the Senators this year. Uh, well, uh, in uh, perspective, I suppose, nine goals. A uh, couple of big ones, though, uh, including during a, a massive night in Grand Rapids uh, a little while back, which sends us uh, off to the break here on episode uh, two of season no, episode 27 of season two of the Belleville Sens podcast. Here's uh, Matt Highmore scoring against the Cran Rapids Griffins. Crookshank stops on the far side, feeds it in the middle. Highmore with a shot. He scores! Third point of the night, third point of the period for Matt Highmore, and we're all square with 2.35 left in the second. Don't miss one second of Belleville Senators action this season. The Belleville Sens Entertainment Network is the only place to hear live coverage of the Belleville Senators for all 72 games plus playoffs. Pre-game coverage begins 15 minutes before each game with David Foote. And the network is also home to the Belleville Sens podcast. The Belleville Senators Entertainment Network, presented by Deerhaven Farm and Garden. Tune in on the Belleville Sens app or BellevilleSens.com. This is the Belleville Sens podcast. Uh, despite my confusion at the end of the last segment, it is season two, episode 27. David Foote, Brock Ormond here in the uh, Jack Miller Press Box and Media Center at CAA Arena. Likely will not have a show next week. Uh, vacation starting to roll around, so make sure you subscribe to the show so that you don't miss our next episode, which is likely coming on the 26th of June. That'd be episode number 28. And then looking to round out season two in uh, mid-July at 30 even episodes. I think we can hit that number. And um, that is, uh, that's the target for mid-July finish. And then a little bit of uh, a break before uh, season three kicks off in September. But uh, again, episode 28 will be in uh, a couple of weeks' time. Subscribe to the show wherever you're listening so that you uh, don't uh, miss that episode and uh, who we have next week because we're getting into the uh, nitty-gritty of our exit interviews. We'll hear from uh, Wyatt Bon Giovanni here in our final one of this week's show. And then some of those uh, players that we know will be back next season, we've kind of been hanging on to some of those interviews. Um, so uh, we'll have uh, those coming up over the last couple of weeks of the show uh, for the season. And then, uh, of course, all the latest news and notes from around the league as well. Uh, the next couple of weeks, we'll uh, pass over some important dates, including the NHL draft, the start of free agency, etc. cetera. So uh, we should have lots to talk about uh, over the, the next couple of weeks as we round out season number uh, two. Uh, season number one, season number point. 7-5, I suppose, for uh, Wyatt Bon Giovanni uh, in Belleville this season uh, with the Senators. Comes in after a uh, trade from the uh, Manitoba Moose at the uh, AHL deadline. And uh, you talk about difference makers, and it was uh, an immediate uh, immediate impact for Wyatt Bon Giovanni. Uh, another guy, and we'll talk about this a bit, I think, similar to Garrett Pilon, who moves out of um, a system where he's been for his whole career and now starts to maybe see some new opportunities. But uh, I was really excited when I found out that we were um, going to be getting Wyatt Bon Giovanni, and uh, I think he lived up to that excitement. Yeah, he did. And uh, they, I mentioned a stat during the uh, one of the last uh, playoff games. He had eight goals in, four, in 34 Manitoba Moose games uh, this season in 14 games, so that's 20 less Uh 20 fewer, I should say, uh, come after coming to Belleville, he had eight goals yeah. and 10 points, so he was close to his 15 for Manitoba. That's uh, the kind of rapid production that you need at that time of year during the season, uh, and he came up with some clutch goals, too. I remember sco him scoring an overtime winner in Toronto against the Marlies to complete a comeback from uh, two goals down. Uh, then he ends up going on to, to notch four points in seven playoff games, and he was noticeable every time he was out there uh, playing with guys like Stephen Halliday and Josh Curry, and they, lo they all looked like they were right in sync together. Uh, they, they worked so well together, and they all seemed to be on the same wavelength, but Bon Giovanni's a guy that can play, again, anywhere in the lineup, which has uh, kind of been the hallmark of this Sens team. 
And, uh, you know, he is a pure goal scorer, and he said as much when he first came to you, David, that uh, I'm, I'm a goal scorer. I, I'm, I, my, I make my money scoring goals and, <laughs> and uh, putting pucks in the back of the net. Not to say that he couldn't uh, set up a play here and there, which he did, uh, you know, excessive amounts of in terms of making things happen in the offensive zone. But, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a pure goal scorer, and the Michigan product is uh, still very much a guy that uh, can – uh, ride out the rest of his career with that kind of mindset. Although, um, you know, if he wants to make the NHL, he's going to have to maybe adjust his game a little bit. But once he uh, gets in the flow of things, uh, he'll be a, a real dangerous player. And we hope to uh, to see him back uh, next year and fitting into the lineup well. And one of those players that, uh, you know, has now three seasons of AHL, well, two, I guess, seasons of AHL experience, but still under that veteran uh, games played threshold. So not somebody that uh, the Sens or whoever you know, takes a flyer on Wyatt Bon Giovanni. We'll have to worry about this year. So that is good news. Um, yeah, he was uh, again just an impactful guy. Another great addition to the locker room. And I know we basically said that about every player that we've talked about on on the show, but it's true. And uh, bringing you know what he learned as a leader at Quinnipiac University as the captain there and an alternate uh, into this dressing room, and again helping guys to um, you know to find their footing and and deal with the stress and pressure really of uh, an American Hockey League playoff push, and uh, also kind of helped to uh, you know bring a lot of those NCAA guys together. We heard uh, Stephen Halliday talk about uh, how uh, him and uh, Bonjo and Kyle Betts and others would kind of uh, give it to each other, you know, based on the school they went to, that sort of thing. So uh, just an all-around good guy for uh, the camaraderie, for the chemistry, and, of course, uh, for the production on the ice. 10 points in 14 games with Belleville, 15 points in 34 games with Manitoba, and then four points in seven playoff games for the Senators as well. Wyatt Bon Giovanni, our next guest on uh, episode 27, season two of the Belleville Sens podcast. 14 games here, 34 games uh, back out in Manitoba beforehand. Uh, how did you feel about your season overall this year? Uh, it was good. I thought, um, you know, each year kind of learned that, um, you know, you got to take some new things and um, try and learn from, you know, each game that you play. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot in Manitoba. And then, you know, coming over uh, to Belleville was a fresh start for me and felt like I was able to kind of, take advantage of the opportunity and um you know the, the team was set up with a with a really great culture when I got in too so um you know set up for success and um ended up really enjoying myself here yeah I was gonna say kind of your first time um uh, moving teams mid-season and, and having to kind of readjust and uh basically start from scratch with with a new club was uh, uh was that a challenge for you or um, were you able to I mean it seemed like you were able to, to fit in pretty seamlessly yeah I mean I think um you know it's funny when you're on the ice and uh you're playing it's you don't really think about it too much you you kind of just go out and play and then you know you continue to adapt and learn to how the team plays but um I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't nervous coming into it uh you know, I got traded while I was on the road in Chicago, so it was a big move. There were a lot of moving pieces, moving parts, and um, had to, you know, pack up my life pretty quickly and move out here. So um, that was definitely a stressful time. I didn't feel like I fully got my feet under me and got situated until, you know, there was a decent time for a home stretch. But uh, now overall, it was, uh, you know, a little nerve wracking, but um, it ended up being really good. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it, it did. Was a good change. Uh, you were obviously quite productive here, like ten points in your fourteen games, four points over seven playoff games as well, and and a big piece is some big goals as well, helping this team to qualify for the Calder Cup playoffs and and advance for the first time. Uh, what was it like, kind of being able to to join the team, uh, get your feet under you, and then be you know impactful when when the club really honestly needed the help? Yeah, no, it was awesome. I. Uh... I, I definitely felt like, you know, you know, hockey was, it was, it was a fun time. You know, mm. it was, uh, to be playing in important situations and to be contributing and, um, helping your team strive towards a goal of theirs. It's, uh, it's really meaningful as a player and it gives you, gives you a lot of purpose. So, um, I think if you ask any hockey player that they, they would love to play those meaningful games and have, um, you know, uh, a, a trust from their coaches and from their players that they're going to 
they're going to trust you to put every foot forward and um, in effort to meet that goal. Uh, how did you uh, like the the city of Belleville, the Bay of Quinty area? Um, you'd been in Winnipeg for a couple of seasons, smaller city, still uh, in Canada, and and a, and a pretty, uh, I guess, passionate hockey market. But how did you feel about uh, uh, living here for the last few months? Yeah, no, I liked it. Um, I uh, I actually found it had some, you know a bit of its charm, the whole the whole area really too, and got to travel out to Picton a few times too, and into the county and. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good areas, um, you know, around here and in Belleville. So, um, you know, it's all about finding finding your spots. And, you know, even in Winnipeg, like, um, I think most people will be like, oh, Winnipeg. You yeah. Know, but, <laughs> but it had it had its spots, too. So, you know, I, I've i traveled a lot for hockey. And, you know, everywhere I've gone, I've found um, found places to go and, and, and good people and that, that I've met. Did you feel like the small town kind of environment maybe helped with uh, with that locker room chemistry, with that uh, camaraderie in, in the group because it is a small town? Yeah, for sure. I think you see guys all the time and, um, you know, you're able to kind of, at least what I found, you're able to build friendships a little quicker sure. too. So, um, no, that, that definitely goes hand in hand with that. Uh, what's the uh, summer look like for you? Obviously, training and, and preparing for next year. Um, how will you kind of take some time away and uh, you know enjoy a, a little bit of uh, the summer months? Yeah, I, I, gosh, I, I I should have been you know I guess a little better with planning, but um, <laughs> I, it's always it's always difficult because you want to go as far as you can possibly go in the yeah. playoffs, and um, you know you just you kind of take it one day at a time. Don't get too far ahead of yourself, but. No, I'm hoping to get on a little vacation here, maybe take a week or two off. And then, um, you know, I'm I'm big into summer training. I like to get, you know, I like to get in the gym every day and, um, you know, treat it almost as if I'm in season two. So, um, you know, the warm weather, being around family, uh, that that stuff is great. So. I don't know. If you got a vacation spot for me, I'll take some recommendations. I, I'm a big cruise guy. I don't know how you feel about cruises, but uh, uh, anywhere that's not the rink is typically yeah. good enough for, yeah. for me come summertime. A, so. a breather from the rink won't, will, won't hurt. Yeah, it's years. not bad. Well, uh, whatever you end up doing this summer, I uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, it's been great having you here for the last few months. And, uh, yeah, appreciate all uh, your time and, uh, and your efforts for us here. Yeah, thank you. It's been fun. And an update on Wyatt Bongiovanni's vacation plans. I believe um, I could see from the Instagram that he's in Italy, which seems like a fitting spot for uh, a guy with a name like Bongiovanni. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. That's a great spot, too. That's, uh, that country is, uh, from what I've seen, is pretty nice. I've never been there. but uh, Yeah, it's been a couple yeah. years since I was uh, out that way. But, uh, yeah, uh, obviously having a great summer and a well-deserved one for Wyatt Bongiovanni. Um, and, again, we kind of talked about, one of those uh, other you know running themes about Belleville as an American Hockey League market and that it, it does still have this junior town feel to it just because of the population and the size of the city but you know that doesn't seem to deter guys at all if anything we're seeing it as a strength and an advantage of playing for this team yeah and Bon Giovanni uh, yeah he he was liking the, the way things were going in Belleville and again it was a quick uh, quick move uh, kind of an unexpected move but he comes from Manitoba to Belleville and uh, yeah he really uh, thrived here he fit like a glove in this lineup and uh, some of the clutch goals like we said that he scored and the, and the clutch plays he made uh, were a big part of why the Belleville Sens uh, made it to round two of the uh, Calder Cup playoffs and and you can tell he's pretty grateful for his time here and uh, wherever he lands next year we hope that uh, he continues on that success because uh, he's a He's a pretty shifty player to watch and, and a guy that fans, I'm sure, will uh, will grow to love even more when he gets a full season under his belt uh, here in Belleville, potentially. One of those clutch goals, an overtime winner against the Toronto Marlies on the playoff push as uh, Wyatt Bon Giovanni takes us to our final break of uh, episode 27 of season two of the Belleville Sens podcast. Slides it down to Clevin. Below the goal line, out for Bon Giovanni, scores! He scores! Wyatt Bongiovanni wins it for the Senators in overtime. And Belleville get two points up on LaBelle. They're back in the playoff places. They've won four in a row, and they head to Rochester on a hot streak with a couple of games against the Amherst.
stay ahead of the game, plan now for the next season of Belleville Senators Hockey. 2024-25 renewals and new seat packages are on sale now. Visit BellevilleSens.com to receive information on pricing and learn about the exclusive benefits season seat members receive because you want to be in on all Sens hockey action. Plan to get in the game. More on season seat memberships at BellevilleSens.com. Go Sens Go! This is our final segment of this 27th episode of Season 2 of the Belleville Sands Podcast. David Foote and Brock Ormond here with you for a few more minutes as we get you caught up on what's happening in the Calder Cup playoffs. And the Cleveland Monsters and uh, Hershey Bears playing Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final tonight. Again, Wednesday the 12th of June. And the winner will uh, take on the now two-time back-to-back Western Conference champion Coachella Valley Firebirds uh, who beat the Milwaukee Admirals 4-1 to already. And uh, maybe Brock, let's uh, perhaps start with that series because it's over um, last week. And it just shows how much happens uh, over the course of a week. Last week we were kind of on the fence on both of these matchups. We figured... You know, all four number one seeds are in the conference finals, as it should be. Both of these series should probably go six or seven games, and it's a toss-up. Who's going to win? Well, in the Western Conference, not the case. Uh, Almost no question at all from the the jump that uh, the Coachella Valley Firebirds uh, win that series. They uh, win a couple of close games, and uh, they win in a blowout after being blown out uh, in game number four. Um, Man. What else is there to say about uh, this Coachella team? Uh, incredible stuff. Yeah, the Firebirds have been uh, a class organization, only two years old, but uh, they find ways to win like they did. And uh, it's a veteran guy, uh, John Hayden, with a hat trick in the uh, clinching game for Coachella Valley. And then you got uh, Devin Shore, former Whitby Fury, gets a goal. Jimmy Schultz gets one, former college guy. And, uh, you know, some contributions up and down the lineup. And, of course, we mentioned uh, – a few guys from the Belleville sends a guy like Andrew Podorowski with Calder Cup championship experience, and uh, all that culminates in in a pretty uh, pretty satisfying series win for Coach Shell Valley. Uh, almost a sweep, but uh, in the end they do a nice job of bouncing back, and that's the kind of thing that is is tough to do uh, if you're an inexperienced team is coming back after getting knocked down by five goals. You come back the next night uh, on the road and you put it to. The Milwaukee Admirals, who are not a slouch at all. They were an outstanding team all season, but in the end, they just ran out of gas. And uh, simply put, the Coach Shell Valley Firebirds are in the final for the second year in a row, trying to change the ending from last year. And you mentioned some of those uh, Belleville connections. Uh, we've talked about them before, but Max McCormick, uh, who is the captain uh, out in uh, Coachella, was here in Belleville for a couple of seasons. Uh, we know Shane Wright is a Kingston Frontenax product, uh, of course, and then in the net you've got Chris Dreger. Uh, Joey Decord was up and down with uh, uh, Seattle and uh, and Coachella Valley this year as well. And speaking of up and down, one of the kind of neatest stories uh, out of the Seattle Coachella Valley pipeline is that of head coach Dan Bilesma, who's been named as the next head coach of the Seattle Kraken in the NHL. He's got to finish off his uh, AHL Calder Cup playoff run still. He, he left California went down to Seattle for the press conference to announce him and then flew back to join the AHL club. I'm not sure I've seen this before, um, but again, I mean, as an organization, that's exactly, I think, what the Kraken want to see. Your coach brings you a championship, maybe another one in the minors, and you almost have to give him a look. Uh, You know, I mean, Dan Balsma's got a pretty good resume himself as well. Yeah, Pittsburgh Penguins, Stanley Cup champion. You know, he's got uh, all the uh, the ingredients to be a – a good NHL bench boss the uh, second time around. And, uh, yeah, Coach Shell Valley would be uh, almost a picture-perfect storybook ending for him to finish it out, uh, win a Calder Cup with the Firebirds, and then graduate on to the Kraken and see if he can to get them back uh, the straight and narrow again after a bit of a uh, down year for them this year. But it uh, should be exciting to see what happens with him. And, yeah, Coach Shell Valley's got uh, all the cylinders working at this point, and uh, whoever they play, they're going to give them a real tough test. All right, so uh, that is the Western Conference Finals. Coachella Valley beats Milwaukee 4-1. to one. Over in the East, a little bit more um, similar, I think, to what we expected. Hershey picking up overtime wins in games 1 and 2 against Cleveland. 
Cleveland. They go to the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Ohio, and they put a pretty good beating on the Monsters, 6-2 to two on Cleveland's home ice. And at that point, it's 3 nothing Hershey, and you're going, hmm, it's not looking too good for uh, this Cleveland team that we had a, a really good look at, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of uh, rounds ago, obviously. But uh, the Monsters, as they tend to do, turned it on. Uh, they turned things around. They stay alive with a 3-2 home ice win on uh, June the 6th. They go, um, they stay at home again, and they have a lopsided 5-1 win at home, and then they pick up an overtime win on the road um, this past Monday to, to force Game 7, which is, again, tonight. And uh, these monsters, man, they, they don't go away. They just keep lurking. Um, some of the contributors of late, uh, Denton Matejchuk, who joined Cleveland after the uh, Memorial Cup finished, has assists in back-to-back games for them. Uh, former Belleville Bulls captain Brendan Gauntz, who was injured throughout the Belleville series and throughout most of the season, has been uh, outstanding in the last couple games. Three goals in two games, including six shots on net in uh, game number six as well. Um, Owen Sillinger's been outstanding. He scored in the last game. Jake Christensen missed a bunch of time. They're an all-star defenseman for the Monsters, but returned to the lineup and scored um, the other night in game number six. So uh, I think we're back to toss-up territory now, despite uh, how dominant the Hershey Bears have looked at times this season and how dominant they've looked at times in the series. It's game seven, and anything can happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And Cleveland uh, really put... uh the hearts of the Bears uh, really broke their hearts in that third period. Hershey scored in game six with 50 seconds left, Joe Snively, and then Gauntz coming through 17 seconds later to tie it. It looked like Hershey had it all wrapped up. Uh, they went off their their uh, platform a little bit, and Gauntz ties it, and then Christensen wins it with his first goal of the playoffs, and it's a massive one to force a game seven back at the Giants center. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's unbelievable what when you think of you know, at this time last week, Hershey was cruising along, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, maybe the visions of a second straight Calder Cup were in their, uh, too far in their heads, uh, too vivid, and in uh, the end of the day, Cleveland Monsters took advantage, and uh, now all of a sudden, like you say, Game 7, anything can happen, and a uh, 3 nothing comeback is tough at the best of times. Imagine trying to do it in a conference final <laughs> series, one step away from a Calder Cup championship, and I mean, it's it's not out of the uh, the realm of possibility, but the because the Cleveland Monsters are an outstanding hockey club, and we saw it uh, in full display in that series against Belleville. But uh, yeah, the Bears have the uh, the championship experience. They have uh, a lot of guys with the uh, postseason accolades to really uh, lean on. So uh, where Cleveland doesn't have quite as much of that, so we'll see if that ends up paying off in Game 7, but it should be an outstanding game on Wednesday night. Uh, No Stanley Cup playoffs tonight, so you can uh, take in the action um, for the uh, Eastern Conference crown uh, between uh, Hershey and Cleveland tonight. Uh, AHL TV, of course, will have it. Not sure if... NHL Network, uh, yeah, NHL Network's picking up the game as well. So if you subscribe to that uh, uh, channel, you can get to the game on the NHL Network or on AHL TV. A couple of pretty good broadcasters uh, involved tonight as well. Evan Pivnik, uh, wait, he's in Coachella Valley. We're talking Tony Brown in Cleveland. Of course, Evan is waiting for the winner. But uh, Tony Brown uh, from Cleveland, Zach Fish from Hershey, those are the guys who will have the call of Game 7 for you tonight if you're tuning in between the Bears and And the Monsters, the winner gets uh, Coachella Valley in the Calder Cup final, which will be underway um, by the next time uh, you hear from us here on the Belleville Sense podcast. Game one, regardless of who wins, is on Friday, June the 14th. The only thing that will change is where. Uh, If uh, Hershey wins, the Bears will have uh, home ice advantage in the final. If uh, the Monsters win, Coachella Valley will have home ice advantage in the final. Either way, the Calder Cup final begins on June 14th. That's a Friday. It will go no later than Wednesday, June 26th. That is the scheduled date for Game 7. And again, Brock and I will be here to take you through it all and uh, get you caught up on uh, this Game 7 tonight and what's been happening in the Calder Cup finals uh, when we get back in a week or so on uh, episode number 28 of uh, the program. Uh, any final thoughts this week, Brock? Uh, what's uh, what's going on this weekend? Big plans? Uh, just getting some some golfing. Just uh, you know, keeping things rolling in the set, and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, who comes out of this uh, Calder Cup fi- or 
uh, Eastern Conference Final for the Calder Cup Final. Should be an outstanding Game 7. Uh, I, I expect nothing less for, I mean, it's, it's Game 7. Like, how could you not get excited for something like that? And, uh, yeah, the Hershey Bears, uh, Cleveland Monsters, two really, really good teams. And uh, selfishly, I'd like to see Cleveland pull off the uh, the comeback. Sure. Because uh, oh, coming from 0-3 down to usurp uh, a defending champion is got to be a story for the ages in the AHL. But, of course, the Bears are so well-tuned as a team, and Todd Nelson's going to have that group really rolling. And from the Belleville side, you either uh, see Cleveland go through and go, well, we got knocked out by uh, the conference champs, or you see Hershey go through and go, hey, remember on opening night when we beat them on their banner-raising night? <laughs> that was a pretty big moment. Uh, the Bears have clearly put that in their rearview mirror uh, as they get set for game number seven. Uh, here tonight. Uh, we'll say goodbye on the Belleville Sands pod. Thanks again to Matt Highmore, to Rourke Sharche, and to Wyatt Bongiovanni for their time. Uh, make sure again to subscribe to the show so you don't miss next week's episode and exit interviews and uh, well, I guess in two weeks uh, time. Not next week. The week after, we'll be back with uh, episode 28 of season two of the Belleville Sands pod. Thanks for listening.